Hello, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment and welcome back to my garage. This is the second video in the series about the G-Mini pump with the built-in controller. In a previous video, we went through the basic setup menu that allows you to program the on and off time and some of the cycle counting functionality. This video is going to be a little bit longer and we're going to take a walk through the advanced programming menu. So let's dig into it. Now here's our pump. It's counting down from an hour off time. That's the default off time when you first power it up. In a second, it's gonna change here to 59 minutes, so now it's counting down in minutes. But before we proceed, I want to highlight this alarm light here. Right now, it's amber colored because when we run it, we'll see there's a low level alert because the follower plate is all the way to the bottom of the reservoir. So as soon as the low level sensor sees the magnet in the follower plate, it's going to go to that low level alert, and that's the amber light. It lets you know that it's low on grease, but the pump is gonna keep running for a few minutes, and that's one of the settings that we'll configure. The default is three minutes, and after that time expires, this will change to a red light, and then it's an actual alarm and it stops the pump and the pump's not going to run. It's not going to pump any grease. And that's because even when the follower plate gets to the bottom of the reservoir, down in the base in the area where the pump elements sit, there's still some more grease left that the unit can keep pumping. And that's where you can later decide how long you want that to pump. So keep that in mind and let's proceed into the advanced programming menu. The first thing we want to do is get to the basic setup menu. And again, that's just holding down the up and down arrows together for a few seconds. And now we need to hold the up arrow for 10 seconds to get into the advanced programming menu. It feels like more than 10 seconds, but it's just 10 seconds. And now here we are at A1. So the first advanced setting is for a pin code. We want to press enter to proceed. The default is off. We're going to just press the up arrow to turn that on. And we can use any number from double zero to 99. Leaving it at double zero isn't very smart. And even what I'm gonna do isn't a very safe password, but you're limited to two digits, so it can only get so complex. I'm gonna just set it to 12 so that I can remember it easily. Now, A2 is pre-lube or pre-lubrication start on power up which means that you have to understand the default way that one of these units is gonna run. The default with pre-lube off is that the memory inside of the controller is maintained even when power is removed. So when you turn off your piece of equipment and this thing is hooked to the ignition power circuit, whenever you turn it back on, it's gonna remember where it was counting down. So if you have a one hour off time and it stops at 35 minutes when the power is cut off, when you resupply power, it's going to remember that it was at 35 minutes and resume counting down from there and then run again. If you want it to grease right away when power is turned on, you can turn this on so that you have pre-lube. And then after that, it asks if you want a delay. So you can set a number of minutes for it to wait to pump. And that's if you are concerned about amp draw or something like that where Maybe you want to wait a minute or two for the heater inside there to warm up the grease. Or again, if you want to wait because you have concerns about amp draw when the unit is initially started, that's where you put a delay in. But you can leave that at zero if you want it to start pumping as soon as it's turned on. A3, now we're back to that low level alarm and low level alert where the low level alert again is that amber light. A3 says how many minutes before it goes to an alarm and stops the pump. So you can tell it how many minutes you want it to sit in alert mode before it goes to alarm. And the default is three minutes. I'm gonna demonstrate this. So I'm gonna set it to the minimum of two minutes and then press enter. Oh, and you can go up to five minutes. So it is a limited range, two to five minutes. Let's set it to two. Now A4, this is related to cycle mode. So if you're running this as timer only, A4 is not gonna do anything. But when you're having it count cycles, as soon as it misses a cycle, the default behavior is for it to 
go directly to an alarm where you'll get the red light and everything stops. But if you wanted to try again several times because maybe you just are worried about false alarms on a cold day or you have some other concern that you think it may occasionally trip up and have a false alarm on that cycle count and you want it to go ahead and retry a few times. So you can have it retry 99 times, which essentially is going to be disabling your cycle count. So you might as well just be running it on a time basis at this point. But just so you know, the option is there you can have it skip a lot of cycle counts. And again, cycle count refers to a proximity switch or some other kind of cycle switch that picks up the piston motions inside of a divider valve because as the divider valve cycles, those pistons move back and forth and that's what your cycle count is really looking for. So let's just set this to one cycle count that it's gonna skip. So this, in this case, if you miss your cycle count twice, that's when you'll get the cycle alarm, what we used to call a cycle fault, and it'll turn the red alarm light on and stop the pump. A5, this relates to the low level alarm and how it clears itself. So when you have an amber light lit up for low level and you put grease in the unit, since it's still running, it's going to see that there's grease there now, the sensor's not picking up that magnet anymore, so then it's going to just automatically clear that amber light for the alert. However, if it goes to an alarm and has the red light on for the low level, when you put grease into it, it still is in alarm mode and not running until someone comes up here and presses the reset or cancel button, which is the same as the up arrow. So now with this A5 setting, the default is off which means that it's gonna stay in that red light alarm even when you put grease into the reservoir. And this is the default because some people want to know that the unit wasn't running because it will be counting up in minutes and then hours for how long it's been in an alarm state. That way you'll know how long it's been since the system got grease. However, some people refill these units when there is no power provided. So they wanna turn this feature on so that now when you put grease in and the magnet moves away from the sensor, it knows to automatically clear the red light alarm. And that's pretty important because you may have a mechanic who just goes around and he sees that it's empty, puts a grease gun on here and puts grease in it so you're good to go. But he doesn't know that he has to clear the low level alarm because he doesn't see anything on the display. And with no power, he can't clear it even if he knows he's supposed to. So that's one situation. But there are also times where you may have a unit in a place where you actually can't service it when it's powered up. There are places where maybe it's inside of a cage or some other kind of a situation that you can't access it when there's power. So that would be the way to program it by turning A5 on. A6, this is also related to the low level and specifically to the low level alert. You can actually set this up so that you never get an amber light. And as soon as the sensor picks up the magnet and the follower plate, it'll just go to a red light alarm and stop. So the default is on, which means you do have the amber light alert. But if you turn this to off, then whenever you have a low level, it's just gonna go right to the red light. And I'm gonna leave this off so that we can demonstrate that. And then finally, A7, we already discussed this in the previous video, but this is how you turn on cycle mode. So the default is off, which means it's just running on a time on, time off basis. But if you wanna do cycle counting, you're gonna turn this on. And once that's on, you have to hook up a proximity switch to the M12 input here, or some other kind of cycle switch so that it gets that cycle input. Now we're back to the normal mode, so let's, press run. But because I told it that I wanted the unit to go right to low level alarm, it actually got rid of that amber light. And pretty much as soon as I started running the unit, it saw that the sensor is picking up the magnet. So it went to the red light 
alarm and stop the pump. And so the reason it's flashing back and forth between LL and double zero is because that's how long it's been in alarm. So now nothing's gonna work. If we hit manual run, it doesn't do anything and it'll keep counting up in the minutes and then hours. And we can even see here that the dot here is below the double M for minutes. Once it gets to an hour, that dot would move over to the double H and let you know that it's been in alarm mode for that many hours. So anyway, let's clear this. That's how you clear a low level alarm. You just hold down the cancel button for a little while. Now we're gonna go back into the programming. Hey, look, it wants a pin code because we told it to ask for a pin code. So now, this is why you don't wanna leave it at double zero is because the default when you're entering the pin code shows double zero to start with. So at least set it to one one or something even though that's not a very good password either. But one two, that's my password. Now it shows that it's in cycle mode because we turned that on. I'm also gonna turn down how many cycles are programmed here while I'm in this menu and just set it to five cycles. So now I'm gonna hold the up arrow because we're still in that basic setup menu and I wanna go back into the advanced menu again. Okay, now we're in the advanced programming menu, A1. Let's turn the pin code back to off because I don't wanna have that getting in my way as I'm demonstrating. A2, I'm gonna turn this back to off because I don't want pre-lube on the demo unit. This A3, I'm gonna leave this at two, like I said it before. Again, this can go as high as five, but I actually, I actually wanna demonstrate this feature. So for the sake of time, let's leave that at two. A4 is where we can have a cycle be missed but not go into alarm, but I'm gonna turn that to off as well because I wanna demonstrate the cycle alarm. The A5, this is the one that auto clears. I'm gonna turn that off because we're not putting grease in this anyway. So it's not gonna matter if we auto clear a low level alarm. Now A6 is if you want to have the low level alert enabled. And to demonstrate what I want, I do want low level alert enabled. So I'm putting it back to the default of having a low level alert or pre-alarm before the alarm goes on. And then A7 is that cycle mode versus timer mode. And I'm gonna leave that set to on for cycles because I wanna demonstrate that as well. Now we're back to our one hour off time. So now let's go ahead and press the manual run button here and we're gonna see the amber alert turn into a red alarm for this low level. And I'm gonna cut away so that you don't have to stare at this for two minutes. And here is our red alarm light and the pump has stopped. So two minutes after the amber light came on, the red light came on and it stopped the pump. It stopped after two minutes because that's what I told it to do in that A3 setting. Now that's cleared, I wanna go in and set it back to five minutes so that I can demonstrate a cycle error. So let's hold the up arrow for 10 seconds again. It feels longer, but it's really only 10 seconds. A1, now we're gonna press enter. One thing that I maybe didn't make clear at the beginning is that the enter key is how you advance through the advanced menu. So you can't do anything with up or down arrows other than change settings. And when you're on one of the A letters, they don't do anything, it's all on the enter key to just keep moving forward through the settings. So now on A3, we're gonna set that up to five minutes because the default on time for the cycle count being four minutes, we need to have a longer time for the low level alarm so that it stays out of the way and doesn't trip first. And now let's just Go through all of these, make sure cycle's on. All right, we're good to go. So now let's hook up a cycle switch real quick. 
since I already wired it to my M12 connector, I just need to line it up with the keyway and make sure I'm not cross-threading. All right, now when I hit manual run, pressing the plunger on my old-fashioned proc switch here, the mechanical one, causes it to count down. And I'm going to stop there so that I don't take up the whole minute that I set as the differential. And now that it's not getting any more counts, it's in low level alert with that amber light. But without any more counts, we're going to get to a cycle alarm before we get to a low level alarm. So let's jump ahead to that now. There we go, four minutes have passed and now it says CY and the count went away and it's just showing double zeros for how many minutes it's been in alarm state. The red alarm light is on so we know that the pump's not gonna run. Pressing manual run isn't gonna do anything and we have to go troubleshoot this unit before it's gonna work again. So troubleshooting a divider valve is what would need to be done when you see that cycle alarm. So that's all there is to it. This little pump is very simple and straightforward, but yet it has a lot of features and options available to you. And hopefully this video helps you understand the options you can configure in the advanced programming menu. If you have any questions about the G-Mini or any other Graco pump, please feel free to contact us. We are always happy to hear from you.